Welcome to the Pulse Shift News. Guys, yesterday I says maybe it's time or it is time to le- start thinking about leaving cities. Today I'm going to say maybe or it is time to start leaving the cities again. Okay, let's have a rundown of what possibly could be taking place with RF right now. We're looking at um, a map of total intensity with regards to the nanotest, the field strength of the Earth's magnetic field. As you can see, this blue region here is the Mid-Atlantic Magnetic Anomaly, or usually just referred to as the Mid-Atlantic Anomaly. This is the area of the Earth where the uh, intensity of the magnetic field is at its weakest, so we can expect inbound com- cosmic radiation in this region here. just so happens to be just below uh, the equatorial region. And as a result of having a lot of cosmic radiation inbound there, we're going to get a lot of cloud seeding, which is going to lead to cloud nuclei and more water uh, droplets forming on those uh, nuclei. And in return, we're going to get more precipitation. If we have a look at the precipitation map, we can see that the majority of the intensity of the precipitation is around the zero degrees or the equatorial region as you can see it's uh, all across or all around you know the circumference of the equatorial region and if we have a quick look at the jet streams we can see that occasionally these jet streams come up close to where that precipitation is they collect it and deliver it to other parts of the world that's why we're getting more flash floods because first of all there's more cosmic radiation inbound in this region of the earth it's then caught up in the jet streams and it's been delivered uh, to these areas that we're, we're seeing now being focused uh, on alternative media not on mainstream media and the reason for that is because mainstream media just completely and outright lie about everything and you can't trust them with anything these days local governments are probably more interested in uh, trafficking drugs, uh, laundering drug money, uh, conquering countries for the royal, and etc. etc. Slight deviation off topic there, but if we look at the equatorial region with regards to the daily sea surface temperature, we can also see the same story around the equatorial region is the warmest part of the oceans. Um, if we look back at the jet streams, we're supposed to have a subtropical jet stream around 60 degrees and around 30 degrees north we're supposed to have the polar jet streams. As you can see, uh, that is not the case. Uh, it looks like the lower jet streams of the southern part of this Earth have intertwined and it looks like we've lost over the northern hemisphere the polar jet stream or maybe the two have come together and formed this mid subtropical and polar jet stream. If we look over the northern hemisphere now uh, we can see that there's a lot less activity when we compare it to the southern hemisphere of the earth and that's probably due to the fact of the earth's position which some people refer to as the tilt but it's not it's just the position uh, um, of the orbit around the sun at this point in time over the southern hemisphere of the Earth, they'll be <coughs> just approaching their winter maximum. Over the summer, although you wouldn't believe it if you lived over the northern hemisphere, but over the northern hemisphere we're in the summer, uh, or reaching the summer maximum point of the year. But you can see the comparison between the two, a uh, lot less activity with regards to what's going on over in the northern hemisphere compared to what's going on in the southern hemisphere. So guys, for a quick summary, we've got a weakened magnetosphere uh, in turn, which has led to a region of the Earth over the equatorial region, which is allowing more cosmic radiation inbound, which is adding to the stocks of precipitable water around the equatorial region. The weakened magnetosphere uh, has weakened the magnetic north and south poles, which regulate the horizontal uh, flow of the polar and subtropical jet streams both over the northern and southern hemisphere which has led to these lazy jet streams picking up that extra precipitation over the equatorial region and then delivering it further north and causing these flash floods 
and leading to um, you know climate chaos which we're experiencing today so guys it's alright to talk about you know cosmic radiation entering the earth through a weak region of the magnetosphere but just to put it into perspective if I think this picture gives a great analogy and it's something else that you can try at home very simple just by turning on the tap in your sink you'll see it forms like what's described here as the termination shock and what this is describing is the heliosphere which protects our solar system and all the planets within it and during uh, healthy activity of the Sun or like we had in the 90s the modern maximum uh, the heliosphere pushes out further which gives us greater protection from inbound cosmic radiation. Now, if there's such thing as what we're experiencing now, a grand solar minimum, the heliosphere shrinks, so it's like turning down the pressure of the tap. And you can imagine that these uh, blue arrows here, uh, which is described as the fast flow water, and then you've got the slow slot, uh, the slow uh, flow water around the outside, uh, would gradually start to lose the protection uh, from the inbound cosmic radiation which would be described here as the slow flow so you know this is something you can do at home little experiment you know if you want to show family members of what's going on with our solar system while we're having first of all uh, more inbound cosmic radiation as a result of the uh, grand solar minimum right now you can describe it and show them a little model of it but it's the exact same thing as what's taking place on Earth with our weakened magnetosphere. Exactly the same, only it's almost like we've got a hole over the mid-Atlantic uh, anomaly, or that magnetic region where it's at its weakest, which is a hole which is allowing a lot of that cosmic radiation in. And as a result, you know, we are getting um, the precipital reservoir of the Earth uh, topped up even more and if we've got weakened magnetic north and south poles it's going to affect the horizontal jet streams in the polar and tropical regions and it's going to pick up that precipital water and then deliver it uh, to wherever you know it's going to uh, precipitate over those regions and that pretty much is what's taking place over our planet right now and you know with a grand solar minimum we also get low temperatures so this extra precipitation in our atmosphere can easily quite turn to snow and uh, that really is climate chaos that's what they're talking about and you know the mainstream media like you're hearing on other channels are not covering this so I'll just leave you with this uh, photo of the heliosphere with the solar system within it um, <clears throat> and meanwhile we'll talk about something slightly different uh, about the video I put out yesterday. Some people must be quite shocked and uh, thought that was pretty brazen to suggest that people leave the city. Well, it's as I explained in the video uh, yesterday. What are you going to do? You're going to wait until you get spanked by the train? When are you going to move off the track? And, you know, I, I know how most people will, even on this channel after watching this for so many years, I mean, we have got a lot of things right in the past five years. We was on uh, the wagon we've, you know, we were entering a grand solar minimum, we're in it. As well as a lot of truths now that even some of these uh, scientists from some of the well known organisations have, you know, came and, you know, uh, messaged me and said, you know, you're right, but we're not going to join you on, you know, telling everybody about what's going on because, you know, there's credibility at stake and, you know, our organisations already suffered massive cuts so there's no reason for us to worsen that at the moment when we're not sure this is going to turn out to be a global catastrophe or a minor event so for that reason we're not going to come out to mainstream media and make any announcements but guys you know we've seen the data we see what happens to past civilizations that was less technologically advanced as us which meant simply that they were in a better situation to handle uh, climate because you know they haven't got to worry about um, things like technological crashes and uh, you know logistical problems as much as what we have you know their height of technology was probably a horse and cart and ours is a lot more sophisticated than that these days 
So when we have something like this, it's going to hit us 10 times worse and it's going to be a global problem because the globe is following uh, suit of these modern westernized countries. So when it all does hit the fan, and it will do, uh, in a matter of time, it's only a matter of time before it all starts to compile. Like I said, we've already start, started now in the gauntlet of obstacles that we've avoided up until recently to hit some of these things. And from this point on, we're going to hit a lot more. And, you know, one of these obstacles was uh, the economic uh, monetary system. And this is about to take a spank and we're already seeing people um, in countries protesting about the um, monetary system and the capitalist system. Anti-capital protests are on the increase and growing and we've seen them recently uh, in Europe and this is this is something we're going to see more of and it's going to lead to less people having trust in the system which will inevitably lead to the collapse of the system. It's going to happen, guys. You know, we've seen the governments do the quantitative easing. And, you know, as I've explained, when you start taking measures such as this, it's bankrupt. And recently, I was speaking to quite a, a large organisation, but someone within that organisation explained to me that they're no longer interested in activity in the UK because there's no money left in the UK. Can you believe that? seventh richest country in the world and these investors were, are not interested in anything in the UK they're going offshore so you know when we see like yesterday an announcement from one of these large companies closing 30 of its large retail stores talking about the house of Fraser and laying off 6,000 people you know it's only a matter of time before the disease that the internet has had uh, leads to more of these massive job losses. The point is I want to make is you don't hear of 6,000 jobs being created. It's always these large number of jobs going. And retail is going to change on the high streets because no one can afford to compete with people online simply for the fact is they can't compete because they're having to pay rates, rent, uh, electricity. You know, they're, they're running uh, these large stores. Whereas someone on the internet can cut all those costs off the products simply because they're online. And, you know, our governments and world leaders have failed to uh, adapt quick enough to the changes that the internet has led to, as well as a lot of other technological advancements. The problem is there has been no control whatsoever over something else that hinders this and, and I know some people don't like to hear this but there's been no control over population growth and that is alarming because when jobs are reducing population is increasing and there's never been such a demand for people to participate in a monetary system but not being able to access the monetary system it's plunging even these western worlds into poverty some of the government's measures that, that has been taken out in the UK such as um, universal credits has led to the death of over a hundred thousand people and when you put that into perspective with uh, terrorism and terrorism attacks you'll find that the government's uh, policies have ended up killing more people than these terrorists have over a short period of time not only that you know when you look at uh, child poverty in the UK we're falling behind some even the third world countries you know and second world countries which is shocking really so, you know, the end message of yesterday was, you know, consider uh, the possibility of moving. And, you know, even if you do, if you've got some equity tied up in a property and you want, you know, you're thinking, well, okay, even if we do, what we're going to do? Well, you know what? I think sometimes it's just better to hang out in reasonable safety than uh, have all your, all your eggs in one basket and take massive risks. A lot of these, you know... There seems to be a lot of things following suit, guys. <clears throat> uh, when I look at uh, investment companies and how they manage people's money, you know, they try and tie up 
80% of the investment funds in government bonds because usually government bonds and as the country is stable are a solid investment but they are generally long term investments but then they manage the other 20% in short and high risk um, portfolios if you like and you know I wouldn't even want to risk 10% of if I if I had any money in any case I wouldn't want to risk 10% in high risk during this time because I think that's where these companies are making money on the high risk because they know for sure that they're going to fail and you know you might be selling the fact if you're a business advisor or a monetary advisor for these people uh, we can probably add 10% to your portfolio and the truth is the matter they're probably going to take 10 percent and you'll probably be happy if you've only lost 10 percent and you've walked away with 90 percent so you know there's a lot of uh, connivery going on there's a lot of corruption going on and you know the veil has been torn open clearly in my view of how governments operate around the world and what their interests are and it certainly isn't in the well-being of their uh, countrymen and women and certainly not for the global uh, colony as a whole. You know, what we've got is greedy little pigs running the world for their own benefits. And, you know, we are really in some ways allowing it. And it's going to, I can see it all, all coming undone at some point in the future, guys. It will all come undone. And I think we're not too far away from it. You know, you can't have half of the population out of work and still expect them to be participating in the monetary system or even if you're prepared to give those people benefits they're going to pl be plunged into poverty and you know what we have to remember at the end of the day is what is most important in life to us all and that is experiences I've said this before the first experience is taking the first breath of air and very likely the last one will be when we take our last breath for most of us and in between that we can only have experiences and it's a shame because we live in this stupid backward prehistoric system where we have to first of all exchange our labor for money and then exchange that money for those things that we want and usually those things that we want are better experiences in life and if we can't access them then you know it's a miserable life for the majority of us on earth I, I mentioned this the other day the world leaders have allowed 10 people to own a combined wealth of 4 billion people on this planet and when you take into consideration there's only 7 billion people on this planet and 10 people own more than half the world's wealth there's something seriously wrong with this stupid system that nobody seems to be undoing at this moment and it seems to me as though they will fight to the death to keep their luxurious lifestyles in their squandering natures you know a hundred million pounds on a super yacht simply because they've got billions in the bank and that is like spending ten pence to us or a nickel or a dime it's 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 a robbery and it's a robbery on the scale of the global resources listen when God created this planet he made sure that everything was there on this planet for us so that we could all access it we barred it or we was barred from it by introducing the monetary system. The monetary system was a great way of <clears throat> bringing uh, up to speed technology because unless there's an incentive nobody's going to do it and the incentive was money so all of a sudden over the last 50 years we've accelerated out of control with technology and we've paid no attention to the fact of what the technology would have on the impact of everybody's daily individual lives if we'd have merged with technology but with another sort of system in place where we wasn't barred from all the resources and you know those quality experiences which is the only thing guys we can do in our lives then things would be different this world would be a paradise on earth instead opposed to the hell on earth which it's slowly becoming for a lot more people every day you know when we see nurses crying their eyes out because they've got to join a queue of a food bank 
because they can't afford to buy food, there's something seriously wrong. When we see police officers that are sometimes putting their lives on the line to protect the community, lose their houses because they can't afford to pay the mortgages, there's something wrong. And when we see a government such as the United Kingdom's government, Theresa May's government right now, stating that, you know, universal credits is an adequate amount, yet it falls less than two-thirds short of minimum wage, we know something's wrong. Because if they're telling employers that it is illegal to pay people minimum wage and at the same time pay people that are on benefits less than minimum wage, then the government surely are breaking the laws themselves. If minimum wage is designed so that the person who works can, you know, have a minimal quality of life on that minimum wage, then why should they subject those people that cannot get jobs simply because there isn't jobs? Less than minimum wage. You know, there is something wrong here, guys. That's all I'm saying. There is something terribly wrong, and if we keep ignoring what's happening to our neighbours, and our neighbours' neighbours, and our people in our community, it's going to get a worse place on this planet. You know, it is time to start doing something. I don't know what, what that is, I'm just suggesting it's time to start doing something. And if that means stepping back out of this system, and trying to go the way of uh, self uh, supporting ourselves with growing our own foods and perhaps bartering, you know, some carrots for a loaf of bread, some carrots or potatoes for a pint of milk, then I think, you know, it's better than the system that we've got right now. Because this system will cut your throat in the blink of an eye. You know, we've only got to look back at how uh, the United States government turned its back on those people in Katrina during that disaster. And we've seen this, not just in America, I'm not just pointing fingers at America, because I know just how bad my government is here in the United Kingdom, and uh, you know, and I know just how bad a lot of the countries are in Europe, you know, going into people's bank accounts and telling them they can't have the money that they've worked so hard for, going into people's pensions and cutting them, uh, allowing these um, stock market companies and brokers to rape and pillage people's pensions something that they've worked all their lives for can you imagine that guys working all your life to build up something for your retirement and then being told it's gone its value is zero it didn't work out as we planned you know I've seen it first and <coughs> in Spain I've seen a lot of elderly people going into bins during the daytime. They're too old to get employment and there is no support. Is that how we respect, you know, our elderly? Guys, I'm going to leave it here. You know, again, there is a link down there. Maybe you want to support. It's up to you. You know, what we do on this channel is tell the truth and try and deliver uh, you know, a broad horizon of what's going on in this world. So, links down there, and I'll say what I usually do. Bye for now.